I'd like to now request our chief guest, Dr. A.S. Kiran Kumar, scientist and former chairman, ISRO, to deliver the theme address. Good morning to all of you, dignitaries on the dais, and members of the IESA, and all the participants of this uh, two-day event, where IESA is trying to bring in both the space segment and the defense segment into focus and look at what can be done and how we can move ahead. As you have been seeing that India is making rapid strides in the space activities where space is becoming a new frontier and space as a new frontier is attracting the attention of a large number of entrepreneurs across the globe and today you are seeing there are many companies which are actually ferrying cargo to space station or looking at carrying humans to planetary <coughs> bodies. And we in India, as you have seen, are making rapid strides and uh, with the successful launch of Chandrayaan-2 as well as uh, the GSLV Mark III third mission successfully completed and in the last couple of years, we have made very significant progress wherein we have brought in many new capabilities of observing Earth in hyperspectral imaging or making use of uh, K-band and even optical communication systems between geostationary platform and Earth. And in all this, we are also looking at how we can actually engage more and more the industry. You will hear probably more of it from Dr. Venkata Krishnan, who has been interested with the responsibility of ensuring that Indian industry is enabled not only to meet the demands of ISRO, but also to make sure that they are capable of contributing to the global space activity. Now, the, in terms of the electronic systems itself, what we are looking at, while you saw the couple of videos showcasing the huge structures, apart from a lot of chemicals and then the propulsion system and the huge um, massive mechanical systems there, the heart of many of these systems actually lies in electronics. And today, you will also be happy to know that in, in Chandigarh, we have a center where we are actually bringing out chips which are required for actually which does the job of controlling the launch vehicles trajectory and the complete operation the processor chip which we call as a Vikram processor and also many of the chips required for our radar imaging satellites and which are progressively being put into operations not only that this uh, foundry is trying to enhance its capability not only in the area of only silicon but also looking at the possibility of using silicon germanium and also trying to make use of uh, MEMS capability that is there and in the recent missions we have actually flown some very advanced sensors whether it is the laser gyro systems or the servo accelerometers which enabled us to actually uh, ferry the lander right very close to moon and we fell short by a few, you can say 100 meters before it touched down. One of the key things is in this, there are also a couple of instruments which are extremely, you can say, capable while Chandrayaan-1 enabled us to look at water availability of uh, water on the moon and presence of water molecules and OH molecules. In Chandrayaan-1, we had carried instruments which were from USA, what was called the M-Cube or Moon Mineralogy Mapper and a Minisar. Whereas in Chandrayaan-2 Orbiter, we have advanced and improved versions of this. One of them is called the spectrometer, IARS, that imaging spectrometer. Another is a dual frequency SAR 
synthetic aperture radar. In fact, dual frequency synthetic aperture radar is a very novel development which enables us to look at the permanently shadowed regions on the moon and actually unambiguously detect presence of water ice and also map the entire moon. The same development, actually the point of telling is earlier, for example, when we were doing this uh, SAR development, the interaction between ISRO and uh, NASA, today we have a program called NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar where we are collaborating together and by 2021, the launch of this satellite will enable mapping of the entire Earth to few centimeter level variations on the surface it can detect. Today, ISRO also has come out with an X-band SAR, which is about five to six kg in weight, which can be flown on either drones or on the aircrafts. While all this development has been happening, it's also the endeavor of ISRO to make these technologies available to the industry and industry can really take, make use of it and build their own systems around that and provide not only in the area of um, synthetic aperture radar, K altimeters or in fact even hyperspectral instrument, you will be happy to know that it was only the, a company in Bombay which provided the key components of this um, instrument which today is operating on Chandrayaan 2 in a very successful manner. And this particular gratings, a specific um, fabrication technique which was adopted and provided by the Indian industry. So in the same manner today, if you look at whether it's our Navic system or the communication systems which are growing, whether it's GSAT 11 or in the coming days, you will have very large high throughput capacity coming up. All of this requires significant amount of electronic subsystems and systems to be realized. And today we still depend largely on international sources for many of the communication equipment. And not only that, in terms of geospatial technology, usage of uh, Navic and already some of the mobile, com one mobile company has already brought out on a mobile the capability of using the Navic enabled signals and provide geospatial solutions. As you may be aware today, any aircraft which is going to be registered in India from January of this year is re required to carry the Gagan enabled receiver so that both en route planning as well as precision landing, it can help. In the same way in the coming years, use of Navic is going to enhance significantly and the messaging capability in this Navic is providing to the fishermen a unique solution. Today there are a couple of companies which are producing small gadgets which are being fitted into the boats of the fishermen and using the mobile of the fishermen just as a display device, he is able to see on his mobile in a form of a video compass where to go for fishing, that is prospective fishing information and not only that, in his mother tongue he is getting alerts about the weather vagaries that are going to occur in the coming days or if he is crossing the international boundary. And Navic also has a unique messaging capability which can make a big impact in internet of things and connecting to remote places for commanding is a possibility. So the opportunities are many, but if you look at as the country is progressing today, more and more prop opportunities are being provided and the government is also looking at how India can become self-reliant in the area of electronic subsystems and components, where in the coming years, it said that it's more than $200 billion the the actually import that is going to occur. If we have to make a huge impact on that, it is like what Jitendra said, it is for our next generation to really capitalize on the opportunities available. And as he really pointed out, the youthful dividend of the country, if it has to m make an impact, we need to encourage more and more of them. And I am extremely happy to see that this particular event is actually bringing to focus about 30 startups and then 
providing them opportunity to showcase what they are doing. It's only when we do more and more of this, provide more opportunities to them and also make, help them in succeeding that we can not only capture the market within the country, but also capture substantial portion of the international market. And it is here that associations like this can make a huge difference. I would like to call upon them to look at ways and means by which they can enable the next set of entrepreneurs to actually look at newer opportunities of making use of uh, electronics, which is, as you are aware, is the heart of any intelligent processing system. And with the today's AI, machine learning, and the likes of uh, using intelligence to solve the problems is becoming more and more order of the day. It's only when we enable them by providing appropriate opportunities by like what was said, setting up the infrastructure in the country which makes use of that. Today, while the Indian intellectual mind is actually doing the value addition across the globe, the value addition in the chains where the chains have been set up by our friends across the globe. It's only when we ourselves establish this chain that we can really take the advantage of the true intellectual capability of the Indian minds. And it's a challenge to this association to make sure that we have in the coming years the intrinsic capability to develop, build, and then harness the capability that exists in the country. So in the end, let me take this opportunity to compliment IESA for bringing together a set of new entrepreneurs and then showcasing to them what exists and also challenging the entrepreneurs here to make their impact not only within the country and globally. Wishing two days of intense deliberations for you and thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. A. Kiran Kumar, for the theme address and for those encouraging words.